Let's dive a little bit deeper into the topic of working with fear. So we've talked about the physical manifestations of fear and how it negatively impacts labor and different ways of doing your best to minimize your stress responses in labor. I want to talk a little bit about working with fear during the course of your pregnancy as a practice. So one of the things that fears are here for is to tell us something. So one piece that I want to address is that there are times that fear comes in to tell us something. We get what I like to think about as an uh-oh feeling. And if we then uh, listen to the fear, right? I imagine it knocks on the door. We listen to it and notice what is it saying, right? And then we see, is this something that I can actually do something about? Or is this something like a fear of the future that I can't control? And I've actually done everything that I possibly can in this moment up until now with all of my planning and decision making to address whatever this fear is. Either way, I'm going to send the fear on its way. One way I'm going to send it on its way is by taking note and saying, okay, I will take action on this. I'm going to think about this more. Goodbye. Thank you. The other is, you know, no, thank you. Um, there's nothing that you have to offer for me because if I'm just scared of labor in general, um, well, one thing I can do is educate myself. So you, you can uh, listen to the entire series as many times as you want. You aren't necessarily going to uh, absorb everything the first time. So, um, but there are things that that sometimes fear brings to us that we just have to release and other times we can take action. So the, the thing I want to imagine is in the course of your pregnancy, you're making decisions about who is going to be with you at your birth, who your caregiver is, right? What the location is that you're going to give birth, what, what decisions that you're putting forth as the decisions that you're hoping are honored during the course of your labor, assuming that you are healthy, baby is healthy, and there's no kind of medical uh, emergency that arises. Um, you are educating yourself. So you're, you're doing the best you can to understand what's happening and to have really concrete tools that you are versed in, that you have mastered, right? All the way up until this, we, we have talked about all of these things and you have all of the tools available to you. I have made a video of everything I can think of. And if there's a question you have, put it in the comments. I will make another one. So making a plan for who's going to be with your other kids while you're in labor so that you feel comfortable and don't need to worry about them. There, there are a lot of pieces. So in this, part of what I like to think about is pregnancy is the time to address these things. And so if you're still feeling fear about labor, really take some time to think about what is it and is there any decision that I made, maybe I made it two months ago and now it doesn't feel right for me anymore based on what I've learned since then, based on what I'm feeling. I always think that you're not alone in your uh-oh feeling when you're pregnant, right? Your uh-oh feeling is in your body, but so is your baby. So your baby may be chiming in on this. Maybe that's a far-fetched idea for some of you, but for others, I, I know people who've talked about how different they felt in different pregnancies and the decisions that they made as a result of that were dramatically different about where they were, who they were having as their caregiver. So it's, it's a good thing to think about. So one of the things that I notice in talking with women about fear is that there are times I'm speaking with a pregnant mama who says, you know, I'm scared of the hospital, but I'm also scared of giving birth at home. Like, no way, that's way too scary. And then I ask and find out that they have not talked to a home birth midwife. They've maybe never, no one that they love, maybe I'm the only person they've ever talked to that's, that's given birth at home. So I just encourage them, go interview a home birth midwife. Like, there is no harm in that. And the reason for that is that either you're in the process of that going to find out that your body, mind, spirit feel aligned with making that decision, or that's going to feel wrong. And it may make you feel a little bit more comfortable with the decision that you've made around the hospital. It also may be if 
home birth is, is either not an option or not interesting to you because your body says no to it. Um, it may be that your hospital has a policy that feels wrong to you and you may just want to look at what other hospitals are within a, a reasonable distance from you. What other caregivers? There may be something in your, the questions that you've gone over with your caregiver, we, things we talked about in videos earlier in this series that arose that just as you've gone through this program and thought more about natural birth, it just doesn't feel right to you, interview other caregivers. So the fear coming, the uh-oh feeling coming can be something you need to take action about and it can be something you need to release. So on that second note, I encourage you, please, please listen to the fear release exercise. So find the video for fear release exercise. I will do my best to have it link on the description or maybe in the video somehow if I figure out how to do that. Uh, and, um, and that can be a really helpful thing to, I've even had mamas listen to it in labor, which was not my intention when I recorded it, but they found it really helpful. So it's a great example of people using information in different ways um, and using it to their highest good. So please listen to the fear release exercise um, and do your best. You may need to listen to it more than once. There may be a new fear that creeps in at week 35 that you didn't have when you listened to it the first time. So uh, please listen to that and um, work with your fears. Pregnancy is the time, not labor. Don't wait until labor arises. And it's never too late. I love this story. I had a mama who was in my class in San Francisco, who was 38 weeks pregnant when she took my class. She was had heard about it. The timing just didn't line up at earlier in her pregnancy. So here we are, she is on the cusp of giving birth. And her first baby was born by cesarean and she was planning a VBAC. And what had happened in the prior several weeks was that her caregiver was suddenly changing her tune. So while in early pregnancy, when she talked to her caregiver about a VBAC, her caregiver was all on board, 36 weeks, 37 weeks, right? She started to get the sense that her caregiver was backing away from her commitment to a VBAC. And my client was really upset by that. She felt like her first baby's birth um, was a series, like a domino effect of errors and that she had ended up having a surgery that was not necessary is how she felt. So, um, she, we talked, we talked <laughs> during the class, she stayed and we talked after the class and she decided to interview a home birth midwife. So she calls someone the day after. So we, we I used to teach my class on the weekends, Monday morning, first thing she's calling home birth midwives, interviewing them. And she decided at the very last minute to change caregivers. So she got a birth tub. She got a home birth midwife. She got all the things that you need to get to be set for a home birth. And she, six days after, our, after the class, so the following Saturday, gave birth at home. So that story, she contacted me after she was over the moon about having made all of those decisions, having um, made such a huge left turn at the end of pregnancy and just honoring her intuition. She just felt like that's what needed to happen and it was a beautiful experience for her. So of course, not every VBAC needs to happen at home, but it's it's a good thing to, to pay attention to when you have the uh-oh feeling, if your caregiver starts to say something different than they said when you first asked them about it, you know, as we've said before, it's easier to change caregivers than it is to change your caregiver's mind. So honor your fear. It's here telling you something and then send it off on its way and uh, make the decisions that are going to lead to the birth that you are envisioning for yourself and your baby. So catecholamine free birth is what we're going for really being as relaxed as possible so you have as many endorphins in your body as possible so that you can be as comfortable as possible. Remember to trust your body. Mother Nature has made this process, it's built in, it's built into your body. So 
you are working with mother nature and you're working with your body and you're working with your baby to have the birth of your dreams.